Hello everyone, welcome back to your own channel, Capsulated Breakthrough. We are back once again and today we are doing something different. In today's class, we will be solving sums on the uh, questions on the topic uh, convolution, linear convolution and circular convolution from the digital communication. Yes, as you all know, I am pursuing electronics and communication engineering in Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering and I am currently in my fifth year, fifth sem. Right, without wasting much time, let's start directly with the sums. Uh, this is a template page of uh, my college. Uh, yes, so we'll be starting with the first sum from the uh, from uh, the DC modules that is digital communication. Uh, okay, so here you see the first sum they have given the values of C1, C2, and C3. Okay, we will be assuming these values later on. As our parity matrix, okay. So, uh, and also they have given six comma three, where uh, to find linear convolution, you will have to have the values of n and k. Six comma three is nothing but n comma k. That is, n is equal to six and k is equal to three. And we have the values of c one, c two, c three. From the information, we can make the parity matrix. Now, how are we making the parity matrix? Parity matrix is nothing that we've drawn from the values of C1 and C2 and C3, right? Wherever the values of D1, D2 and D3 are given, we'll be putting the values of 1, that is binary 1. And wherever there is no value, we'll be putting binary 0, right? So if we notice that the C1, C2, C3 is nothing but the parity matrix and they follow the same pattern, wherever there is a value of D1, D2 and D3, we'll be assigning it with 1 and wherever this empty, we'll be putting it 0. I hope this is clear and understood. With this, we get our parity matrix. But the end result we have to find in this is code vectors. So to find code vectors, we don't just have to have parity matrix. We have to have the generator matrix. Now, how do we find generator matrix? Generator matrix is nothing but the mixture of the parity matrix and the identity matrix. Now, how do we find the identity matrix? That is I of K. Here, you see i of k. Now, i of k is, what is the value of k? k is 3, that is i3. Now, uh, the uh, the identity matrix should be of 3 cross 3. This is the, you have to find, whenever they've given i k, that means i of 3. 3, because we have k value here, 3. So, i of k, that is the parity matrix, so gen, so I'm sorry, the identity matrix should be of 3 is to 3. Now, you know how to make identity matrix, right? 3 is to 3, that is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, once we, as we've gotten the parity matrix, now we've got the identity matrix. The generator matrix is given by I of K bar P. So, we will write, we have got the generator matrix. The generator matrix is nothing but 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. The identity matrix will be written first. Carry it on with the parity matrix. Here comes the generator matrix. Till here, as you solved, this becomes the half of the problem. So the main the main thing, half of the problem is solved, that is you've got a generator matrix. So once we get generator matrix, what we have to do now? We have to find what are the possible codes. Now how do you find what are the possible codes? So to find the code vectors, right? We need the code to find the code vectors. Now how do you find the possible code to find the code vectors? The possible codes can be found as a small formula that is n 2 power k. You know, we've, we've known the value of k that is 3. Now, 2 power k becomes 2 power 3 and the number of possible codes are 8. Alright, so now how will you find the codes that is the small formula that is d1, d2, d3 into the generator matrix. You'll have to multiply the values of d1, d2, d3 into generator matrix. It is simple, right? d1 into 1. One, this row with this column, this row with this column, this row with... I hope you all know how the, the matrix multiplication works. It's very simple. This row with this column, this with this column, this with this column, it keeps on going. Right? So, let's start. That is D1. D1 with this column becomes D1, nothing else. D2 with this column becomes D2, D3 with this column becomes D3. Right? Now, here. We have D1 and D2. We don't have value of D3. That is D1 plus D. D here, it is X or gate. Not plus. You remember, there's no addition happening here. As I'm pointing on, there's no addition happening in assets, but that is XOR multiplication. XOR uh, happening, operation happening there. 
So here we have 1 and 1 in this column that is d1 plus d2. Here we have all three ones that becomes d1 plus d2 plus d3. Here we have 0 and 1, 1 that becomes d2 plus d3. I hope this is very clear. Let me tell you again. You'll be multiplying d1, d2, d3. Not the values but rather d1, d2, d3 with the generator matrix you've got. It is simple. This with this, this with this, this with this happens. And again you go back because 1, 1, wherever 1s are there, there you put the values of d1, d2 or d3. Right. So once you've got this, it is uh, we are we are up to the final step of this uh, uh, problem. That is to draw or to construct the vector table. See, construction of the vector table carries lot of marks. Uh, the highest uh, rate of marks is the construction of vector table. If you do the problem till here, and if you are missing out by draw, drawing the construction table, uh, the vector table, that means your problem is incomplete, and some teachers might not give you marks also. Right. The marks depends upon how well you've done your uh, table, right? So here's the vector table. And uh, how do you draw the vector table? See, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C6 are nothing but you are uh, values. That is D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6. I hope you've got this right. D1, D2, D3 are your initial values. These are D1, D2, D3, D1, D2, D3. So you, what you have to do in D1, D2, D3 is nothing but Write the binary codes that is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. These are the initial binary codes for three, uh, uh, three numbers. Now, C1, C2, C3. How do you find this? The okay, for all zeros, this is all zero, right? Nothing changes. Now, for 0, 0, 1, that is D3 is 1. How do you write? You have to simply copy the whole thing 0, 0, 1 here. Now, C4, that is D1 plus D2. D1 plus D2 becomes 0 plus, there is no plus happening here. Remember, there is no addition happening here. There is X or happening here. 0 plus 0 becomes 0. 0 plus 1 becomes 1. So, we become it. C5 becomes 1 here. C6 is what? D1 plus D2 plus D3. That is 0 plus 0 becomes 0. 0 plus 1 becomes 1. Right? I think you've got this. Yeah, great. So, uh, after this, Okay, similarly, you'll be doing the same thing with here, that is for C4 and like that. Become, this becomes C4 becomes 1, then C5 becomes, I'm sorry, becomes 1, C6 becomes 1. Okay, so similarly, uh, I hope you've understood this. Uh, you'll be doing the same, same thing for the whole table. Let me give one more example. Let's take it for this 100, zero, zero, right? 100, zero, zero, you'll have to copy the same thing for C1, C2, C3, there is 100. Zero, zero. Now, C4, C4 is D1 plus D2. Okay, that is D1 plus D2 for 1, 0, 0. That is 1 plus 0. Here, XOR, happen, uh, XOR operation is happening. For, for XOR operation, 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 0. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. For XOR operation, 0 plus 0 becomes 0. 1 plus 1 becomes 0. But 0 plus 1 or 1 plus 0 becomes 1. So 1 plus 0 is always 1. This is how XOR operation of binary values work. I hope you understood this. I'm repeating it again. Note this down any, uh, somewhere if you have any notebook. Or uh, this is very important. This is not addition. This is XOR operation. Right? So I think you've understood this, pro uh, on this properly. Uh, okay, we were here. This is done. Now, D1, D2, D3. D1, D2, D3. 1 plus 0 becomes 1. 1 plus 0 becomes 1. So your value for C6, C5 will be 1. Now, D3 plus D2. D3 plus D2 becomes 0 plus 0 becomes 0 in XOR operation. 0 plus 0 becomes 0. Here is 0. Now come into the final part that is Hamming weight. Now how do you find the Hamming weight of the given vector table? If So now you've created the vector table. How will you find the Hamming weight of this vector table? So to find the Hamming weight of the vector table, the other thing you have to do. In the row, you have to find how many ones are there. For example, Considering from this part, leave the initials D1, D2, D3. Consider from C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. I'm sorry. Consider only C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. In these, how many ones are there in a row? You have to count. For example, in the first row, there is no one, so zero. In second row, there are one, two, three, three ones, so three. In third row, one, two, three, four, so four. In fourth row, one, two, three. In fifth row, three. In sixth row, there is four. Seventh row, three. And eighth row, four. Right? So, what will be the Hamming weight 
okay so these are the hamming waves of your this thing what will be the minimum distance the minimum distance will will be nothing than the the least value in your hamming weight leaving zero remember this the least value in your hamming weights excluding zero will be your minimum distance here's where the problem ends if you complete the problem till here you will get exactly 10 marks is what demanded for drawing the vector table finding hamming weights and minimum distance if you do this much then you'll be getting exactly 10 marks no one can steal your 10 marks from this so here's here's the end of the problems. This today we've done one problem. Uh, maybe tomorrow we'll be doing the second problem also. That is upon the circular convolution. If uh, you want, I hope so you understood this problem as a basic. So yes, that's it for today. Uh, everyone. Until next time. See you. Sayonara.